This lectures cover the confidence intervals for variance and standard deviation. Our main objective is to learn how to interpret the chi-square distribution and use a chi-square distribution table. We're also going to learn how to use the chi-square distribution to construct confidence interval for the variance and standard deviation. Now, now the point estimate for population variance is the sample variance. Also, the point estimate for standard population standard deviation is the sample standard deviation. So again, a sample variance is the most unbiased estimate for population variance. So here we have the estimate population parameters. And we have the variance for again, population and also the standard deviation for population. With sample statistics, we have again, the sample variance, which is S square, and also the sample standard deviation. So we can use the chi square distribution to construct a confidence interval for the variance and also the standard deviation. Now, if the random variable X has a normal distribution, then the distribution of chi square or S square is N minus one, times S square over sigma square. Again, N is the sample size. S square will be the, uh, the sample variance. And sigma square, again, is the population variance. And this will form the chi square distribution for samples of any size that the sample is greater than one. So the properties of a chi square distribution one is all chi square values, which is S square, are always greater than or equal to zero. So a chi square value cannot be a negative value. Also, the chi square distribution is a family of curves, each determined by the degrees of freedom. So again, to form a confidence interval, again for the population variance, we use again, chi-square distribution with degree of freedom equal to one less than the sample size. So the degree of freedom again is N minus one, the sample size minus one. Then we can find the area under each curve of the chi-square distribution, which is again equals to one. So again, the areas under each curve, the chi-square distribution always equals to one. So this is a chi square distribution are always positively skewed. So here we can see that all our graph are skewed to the right or the distribution. For example, the degree of freedom, we change the shape of whether the graph is shrink or spread. So degree of freedom is two, we can see that it shrink. When the degree of freedom is bigger, let's say 30, we can see it spread wide, but again, all the chi square distribution are always positive skew. Also, in terms of the critical value for the chi square, we said there are, there are two critical values for each level of confidence. And so the value for chi square right will represent the right tail, and also the chi square L, which is left, will represent the left tail. So we have the right tail to my right and also left tail to my left. So that's the area between the left and the right critical value, which we say is C. So here we have one minus C over two to the left, then one minus C divided by two to the right also. So next, let's try one example. Here they say we should find the critical values for the right section, chi square right, and also the chi square left for 90% confidence interval when the sample size is 20. So first we know the sample size is 20. So to find the degree of freedom, it will be 20 minus one. Then each area in the table will represent the region under the chi square curve to the right of the critical value. So the area to the right of the chi square is one minus C divided by two. 
which will give us again, we have the confidence interval is 0 0.90 or 90%. So it will be 1 minus 0 0.90 over 2. Again, 90% is 0 0.9 or 0. So the answer here will be 0 0.05. Then next, we find the area to the right of the child square left. So that will be 1 plus C divided by 2. So that will give us 1 plus 0 0.90 divided by 2, and that gives us 0 0.95. So now we can go to the child square distribution table. And as we said in the previous lectures, uh, the columns at the top will be the alpha values. And then the degree of freedom will be the rows to my left. So if I want to find the child square R, we know the degree of freedom again is 19. Let's make sure. Uh, degree of freedom is 19. So we go to again row 19. Then we have the half a value, which we saw to be 0 0.05. Here we are doing the right first. So that will give us 30.144 for the critical value. Then we can do the same thing to the child square left. And then child square left, we have to go back here and see the value. So here we have 0 0.95. So this means, again, the degree of freedom will be the same value, 19. But this time, we also have, a, oh, this is the first one for the right again. I'm repeating it. So the 90% of the area under the curve lies between 10.117 and 30.144. So we have the chi square L to the right and also to the left. So again, to the left, as we saw in the previous slide, and the alpha is 0 0.95. So we go to that 0.95, the degree of freedom is the same 19 for both. Next, we can find the confidence interval for again the population variance and also the population standard deviation so to find the confidence interval for the variance it will be n minus one times the sample variance squared a uh, variance over chi square again or x square r the right and here we are looking for the confidence interval so it should be greater than and also it should be less than to the left. N minus one, S square over S, a child square left or L. So the confidence interval for the variance will be the square root. I mean, the confidence interval for the standard deviation. Always the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So we square both sides because this formula is for variance. Now, the probability that the confidence interval contains either the variance or the standard deviation is C. Confidence interval is C. So now let's see the steps in words and also in symbols. Find the confidence interval for, again, the variance and also the standard deviation for the population. First, we need to verify that the population is what normally distributed normal distribution. Then secondly, we identify the sample static N and also degree of freedom. When we know the sample size, we always can find the degree of freedom, which will be N minus one. Next, we find the point estimate, which will be again, the sample variance. And the formula here is given X minus X bar all square. Now, depends on how many x we have, the size of the data, or in this case, the sample. So we have to do, for example, s1 minus s bar all square plus s2 minus s bar all square. Everything divided by the sample. In this case, if it's 2, then the sample size is 2, so it will be 2 minus 1. Next, we need to find the critical value for both child square right and also the left. And this will correspond to the given level of confidence C. Again, the child square distribution table is in appendix B, table number six. 
So we use it to find again the critical value. Next, we find the left and the right end points. And also we form the confidence interval for the population variance. So the variance, population variance means it's greater than n minus one times sample variance divided by, again, just square to the right. So that means, that again, this will be, population variance is greater. And also it should be less than n minus one. And the sample again, variance, which is s square over child square left. Next, we can find the confidence interval for the population standard deviation by taking the square root of each point or each end point. In this case, again, we want to use the standard deviation instead of the variance. Now, let's see one example here. You randomly select and weigh 30 samples of an allergy medicine. The sample standard deviation is 1.20 milligrams. Assuming the weights are normally distributed, we should construct 99% confidence interval for the population variance and also for the standard deviation. So first we can find a degree of freedom. Again, our sample size is 30, so it will be 30 minus one, which is 29. Then we know our confidence interval again is 99%. So the area to the right, which is S square R, will give us one minus C over two, which is one minus 0 0.99 over two. So that gives us 0 0.005. Then next we find the area to the right, which will be the ch as chi square or x square L. It will be one plus C over two. So we get one plus 0 0.99 over two, which gives us 0 0.995. Now, if we had these two values, again, we're going to get one. But next step, we are going to find the critical values. So the critical values are x square r will be 52.336 and s square l which is again left to be 13.121 so now we can find the confidence interval for the variance or the population variance uh, so the left hand point will be n minus one times s square over x square r right so that gives us 30.1 and this will give us 1.20 square because again, we know the standard deviation. Then we divide by S square R, which is given uh, 52.336. So the left end point after these calculations, we get zero point approximately 0 0.80. So we do the same thing to the right end point, which is the same formula, N minus one times S square over x square l so we get 30 minus 1 s square will give us 1.20 or square then x l or the left square we give us 13.121 so roughly we get 13 3.18 so this will tell us that again the confidence interval will be between the variance between 0 0.80, which we find at Q1, to 3.18. So we can say that we are 99% confidence that we can say that the population variance is between 0 0.80 and 3.18. So next is the confidence interval for the standard deviation. So as we said earlier, standard deviation, we take the square root of the variances. So to the left square root of the variance, to the right square root of the variance. Then we plug in the values. So we get zero point and the, the sigma or the standard deviation for the population should be greater than 0 0.89 but it should be less, lesser than 1.78. So in summary, in this lectures, again, we interpreted the chi-square distribution 
and also how to use the chi-square distribution table. The chi-square distribution table, we need only two items, the alpha value, which will tell us the column to go to, and also the degree of freedom, which will tell us the row to go to. The intersection of the row and the column will give us the value. We also use the chi-square distribution to construct a confidence interval for both the variance and standard deviation. Hopefully in the future, we will see example solution uh, using the concept of very checking the variance and standard deviation. So that will be the conclusion for this lectures. And again, wish everybody the best. Thank you.